and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. When the time of David's death drew near, he gave these instructions to his son Solomon. I am going the way of all flesh. Take courage and be a man. Keep the mandate of the Lord, your God, following his ways and observing his statutes, commands, ordinance, and decrees as they are written in the law of Moses, that you may succeed in whatever you do. Wherever you turn, and the Lord may fulfill the promise he made on my behalf when he said, if your sons so conduct themselves, that they remain faithful to me with their whole heart and with their whole soul, you shall always have someone of your line on the throne of Israel. David rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. The length of David's reign over Israel was 40 years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. Solomon was seated on the throne of his father David with his sovereignty firmly established. The word of the Lord. Blessed may you be, O God of Israel, our Father, from eternity to eternity. Lord, you have exalted over all. Yours, O Lord, are grandeur and power, majesty, splendor, and glory. Lord, you you are exalted exalted over all. all. Lord, you are exalted over all. Yours, O Lord, is the sovereignty. You are exaltated as head over all, riches and honor from you. Lord, Lord, you are exalted exalted over all. In your hand are power and might. It is yours to give grandeur and strength to all. Lord, Lord, you you are are exalted exalted over all. all. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits, instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave from there. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay. Well, for the six of us here at Mass this morning, congratulations for making it. Uh, Just uh, some brief comments about the readings today. Uh, First of all, I think it's uh, important for us to to know the chapter 6 of the Gospel of Mark. It's one of the often overlooked passages in the Gospels. Um, Non-Catholics, one of the biggest differences between us and Protestants is the understanding of the sacraments. And so many Protestants can understand, you know, the sacrament of communion, baptism, marriage, some of those things. 
But I think one of the strangest sacraments for Protestants is the idea of the anointing of the sick. It seems very foreign. And one of the things I like to point out to people when I'm anointing them is that when we anoint the sick, we're doing literally what the apostles did. If you pay attention to Mark chapter 6, verse 13, it says these 12 disciples drove out many demons and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Right, so the anointing of the sick, we can read about it in the book of James, but also right here in the Gospel of Mark, it's clear that one of the things Jesus instructed the disciples to do was to anoint the sick with oil, which we are still doing today. So I just think it's always helpful to point that out. Uh, just a couple of other things I want to say about the first reading. Uh, we read about the death of David this morning. Um, I'll probably give more of a uh, detailed description of this on Monday. But I just think it's important for us as we go through these books of Samuel, and now as we're going into the books of Kings, we are really at the climax of Old Testament history. So we remember the, the promises that God made to Abraham, that he would give him many descendants, he would make of him a great nation, and then ultimately he would establish a king among his descendants. And we also know that when the Israelites were freed from Egypt, right, they were promised the promised land. When the Israelites arrived, the, so the Exodus happened about 1200 BC. It wasn't until about 200 years later that David came to power. And because of the infidelity of Israel, the people hadn't actually conquered the land. So it wasn't until the time of David that the entire promised land was conquered. And the capital was established in Jerusalem, which was the ultimate goal all along. So it's really the climax of Old Testament history, because another thing that happened with David is that not only did he conquer the promised land, but even some pagan nations surrounding Israel also considered themselves allies of King David, almost like he was their king. Uh, one of the other things about David is that it is in the books of Samuel that David is actually referred to as a son of God. Nobody had been referred to as a son of God since Adam in the book of Genesis, right? So... David, in a certain way, is like the fulfillment of all of God's most important promises in the Old Testament, and it's the climax of Old Testament history. And then furthermore, when his son Solomon builds the temple and consecrates it, the ark is placed in the temple. Right? That is really the fulfillment of all of it. But what we're going to see shortly after the time of Solomon is that everything's going to go downhill. Right? So basically, if you pay attention to the Old, to the Old Testament... It basically goes from the days of Abraham, and there's kind of this gradual succession up until the days of David and Solomon, and then it's a gradual degression up until the time of Jesus, right, where he reestablishes those covenant promises. I just think it's helpful for us to pay attention uh, to where we're at in salvation history. Uh, one last thing I'll point out to you, since we're not going to have Mass tomorrow, I do think the, the reading we're missing out on tomorrow is a very beautiful one. You might take a look at it. It's from the book of Sirach, and it talks about uh, the praises of David, basically like a eulogy for David in the Old Testament. Right? As a youth, he slew the giant. He wiped out the people's disgrace when his hand let fly the sling stone that crushed the pride of Goliath. He called upon the Most High God who gave strength to his right arm. So there's all these praises about David, and I do think it's kind of an interesting thing you might examine in your own life. How much does your life relate to these praises of David? And then one last thing I'll just point out as a, as a closer for the homily is the, the very first line of the reading tomorrow. Listen to how beautiful this is. Imagine if somebody wrote this on your tombstone. Like the choice fat of the sacred offerings. So was David in Israel. Can you imagine? Like the choice fad of sacred offerings, so was Cindy Guyman in Ladoga, Indiana. Right? Pretty crazy, pretty funny. So just, uh, just going to leave you with that. Uh, something for all of us to strive for, to be like the choice fat of the sacred offerings, just like David was in Israel.